Okay, so we're going to start um, the intermediate to advanced level Pilates section with a warm up. Um, so we're going to the first exercise we're going to do for the warm up is the roll down. We're going to do three at the beginning of the class, and we're going to compare those with one at the end, just so you can assess how uh, much more flexible and open you feel at the end of the class. So I'm just going to start side on. Take a deep breath in through the nose, ocean breath out through the mouth, curling the spine forward one bone at a time. Deep breath in at the bottom, exhale to slowly curl up, pulling in the lower abdominals and shoulder blades down away from the ears. So each time you curl forward, try to imagine peeling the spine off an imaginary wall. Exhale, slowly curling up, imprinting that spine back up that wall one bone at a time. You're, on the third repetition, you're just um, going to give a mark out of 10 for any areas of tension you have, and then you can compare at the end of the class. Okay, and the next um, stretch we're going to do are a series of arm swings just to open up the upper back and mobilize the shoulder joints and encourage good upper back posture for the rest of the session today. So we're going to start with our feet uh, again in that hip dis distance apart stance um, and the arm's going to be out in front, left hand is palm down, right hand is palm up. Deep breath in and then deep exhalation to take the arms back. So you want to be breathing out to take the arms back behind. So it's a very short breath in through the nose and a deep sigh through the mouth. Closing the rib cage as the arms go back. So you're trying to encourage the core to work on the exhalation. And the second variation is just to open the front of the shoulder. Um, and again, just encourage good upper back posture. For this exercise, you need to make sure that the shoulders don't hike up towards the ears and that the palms stay upright. So if the palm starts to come forward as your arms go back, it means you've taken the hands too far. Again, keep closing the rib cage to take the arms back. And the third version is for just a bit of circumduction through the shoulder joint. Um, so just slightly different kind of movement for the shoulder as well as um, starting to mobilize the hips and challenge your balance at the beginning of the class. And we're just going to move down to the mat for one final movement as part of the beginner's warm-up section. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, partial roll back just to mobilise the lower portion of the spine um, and just bring your awareness into your deep lower abdominal area before we begin the main section. And I prefer to use a, a pad just between the knees. You could use a small cushion or a thick towel rolled up. There's two positions. The first one... Um, I'll demonstrate with the arms just in line with your shoulders and they stay in line with your shoulders at all times um, until you come forward out of the position. Exhale to sink and curl back looking into the groin staying where the back stays round. Deep breath in. Exhale to contract the spine forward and slowly roll up. Lengthening through the crown of the head so we're going to tuck under so that Posterior tilt of the pelvis, pubic bone forward. Hold it there, open the hand six inches, curling forward, one bone at a time. As you curl back, we're trying to focus on keeping the lower lumbar area in flexion. The hands come forward and down on the last repetition. So we're just doing three, 
exhale slowly drawing the hands forward and up and the second variation is more for challenging your upper back posture and working uh, higher up into the abdominals in your rectus abdominis and your external obliques in the front section the arms are folded um, one over the other like a genie or a cossack Exhale to sink, tuck, roll back, look into the groin where the lower back is round. Draw the arms back as far as you comfortably can. So what we're looking for here is to maintain the lumbar flexion when the arms go above the head. So squeeze the core from the sides at this point and then slowly flexing the spine to curl forward again. When we flex, we're using the lower abdominal muscles and the pelvic floor. And then when we extend and draw the arms up, we're pulling in the muscles at the side of the abdomen. And we're holding this one for three counts. Last one, shoulders down, nice and relaxed, and then slowly curling up. So we're gonna start the um, intermediate to advanced level Pilates section with an exercise I call the sideline teaser. Um, and I'm gonna use the edge of the mat again, just to line up um, my back and you may uh, possibly need a head cushion for this one so just have one nearby in case you need need that so we're just coming into a side lying position your hand should be in line with your bottom shoulder and your back is in line with the edge of the mat so some people prefer to have a pad between the knees here I'm not going to have one and the arm is going to be reaching up roughly in line with the toes, which are about 45 degrees in front of your hips. The top hip is leaning back slightly, and you're just going to turn the toes and knees to the ceiling as you lift up onto the elbow or the wrist for the harder option. So we're using a short blast to bring the legs and the bottom arm off the floor. And ready to change over onto the other side. So we're using the out breath for the exertion here. Try and start the breath out before you perform the upward movement to get the core working harder. Pressing through the heels continuously. The breath in is the lowering action. And the next exercise is the hundreds. I'm going to show you two variations. The first one's going to focus on the core and the second one we're going to focus on the upper back stability using the traditional pulsing of the arms. I'm just gonna use the technique here to stretch out the lower back. So we're just gonna come into a bridge, stretch the back away from you along the floor. And just readjust the head pad there. So your pelvis should be in neutral. So the pubic bone, pelvic bone should be lying flat and the lower back should be just lightly in contact with the floor um, so you're not putting pressure through the back. Exhale to contract the head and shoulders forward off the floor so the abdominals are scooped. The arms are roughly in line with the shoulders. And you can have the legs either in a parallel position, turned out, or even turned in to reduce strain on the hips. As long as your body doesn't move as you pulse, you can perform a pulsing action, trying to press the triceps to the floor. It's a deep breath in for a count of four, and then six pulses out. And the next exercise we're going to do is the double leg stretch. This is um, a variation of the original double leg stretch. 
and it's designed to challenge your centre of gravity while the arms and legs are moving. This is, um, I call this frog position, so the heels are always higher than the knees so that your back doesn't pull off the floor. So you're breathing out to contract the head and shoulders forward. In touch the back of the hands above the knees. Exhale, circle the arms, reaching round, keeping the head and shoulders off the floor. Breathe in, frog down. So we're just trying to focus on keeping the abdominal area scooped. And as the arms go back behind the head, we're maintaining the upward position with the head and shoulders. You can do a few circles to encourage progression here. So the next exercise is the shoulder bridge and I'll show you a couple of uh, variations, including a modification if you have any uh, straining at all in the lower back and also a progression as well. So we're gonna come down onto the mat and again, there's nothing behind you on the floor and you haven't got a head pad here. So slowly peeling the spine off the floor and you're bending and extending one leg in the air, lowering the heel towards the floor. You can take the elbows and hands off the floor just to encourage um, a little bit more challenge in the upper back stability and we're also using the hands to check that the hips don't drop which usually happens on one side as we lift and lower the leg. You can adapt and modify the exercise by just resting very lightly on fists under the buttock area if you find that's too much extension in the back or if you're rocking from side to side. You can also dig the fingers just into the very bottom of the buttock, top of the hamstring to stop the hamstrings from cramping. and then slowly roll the hips down to finish and hug the knees into the chest. And the next exercise is the side kick kneeling. But I'm not gonna do it kneeling because most people um, find it very difficult to get into that position. Um, so you're actually going to do um, like a forearm plank position and use that for your side kick kneeling today. So again, we're using a percussion breath here and a percussion is so many beats per breath. Here we're using two, just to give a little bit more force to that movement and stretch out through the hip. You're gonna feel the back of the um, leg, the back of the hip engage as the leg goes back behind, and you're gonna squeeze the core continuously. And we're gonna come over onto the other side. Pull the bottom rib away from the floor, because that has a tendency to sort of sag towards the floor here because you need to keep those oblique muscles nice and tight. Stretch through the top of the hip as the leg goes back. And you can just provide extra challenge by placing the hand behind the head. Just make sure the crown of the head is lengthening. And just coming up into just a very, um, Easy side bend. And then we're going to come down into a seated position for the saw. So you're actually going to have your feet mat distance apart. But I'm just going to show you from the front so you can see, um, check your, the angle of the hips um, from the front position. 
So we can have the arms just to shoulder height, shoulders down, lifting the chest up. If there's any impingement on the shoulder at all, turn the palms to face forward instead. And what you're doing is you're rotating and then extending forward. And we're doing this without lifting the hip off the floor. So I'm just going to um, actually demonstrate from the side for you. So try not to look up at the video as you're doing the exercise because you might strain the neck. So maybe just watch first and then try to listen to the audio. So we're exhaling to extend the spine forward, squeezing the core to come up. And we're using that percussion breath again, far further. So it's a prep pulse and then we're extending forward. We're not pulsing back and forth here. We're actually coming further forward each time. You can increase that to three here as well. And next we're going to come down onto the floor again, just to stabilize the shoulders before we continue with the last few uh, more difficult, uh, challenging exercises. We're just going to have a pad under the head again. And stretch the back down the mat. So there's no gaps at all, hips are level, nice and flush with the cubic bone and the pelvis, collarbones wide. And you're just going to have your feet comfortably apart, arms up to the ceiling. And we're just going to do an open windows exercise next, just to stabilize the upper back. Breathe in to extend through the fingers, exhale, draw the elbows back, inhale to turn the forearms and exhale, extend through the fingers. Squeeze the core to bring the arms up, close the ribs, shoulders down away from the ears. What might happen as you come down is that you might find that your upper back lifts off. So instead of um, taking the arms so far back, we might just have them here. So squeeze the core to bring the arms up. Exhale, bend the elbows out to the side. Core to turn back and then reach through the fingers overhead. Now we're ready to go into swan dive lying on your front. Shoulders down away from the ears, elbows roughly in line with the um, shoulders for a modification or you can bring the elbows further down to make it a little bit harder. So because we're extending the spine here, we're breathing in to come up, exhale to raise the legs up behind. It's a rocking action, so it's a continuous flowing movement. Squeeze that core, try to extend through the fingers and legs in opposite directions, looking up in the direction you're aiming for, and back into baby pose from there. And next we're going to come into a seated position for teaser. And you're going to have a um, head cushion behind you, you might have to adjust that slightly as you come down, because we're going to start seated. So exhale, sink, tuck, roll, slowly coming back towards the floor, you might have to adjust the head cushion. So exhale to press the spine gently into the mat and slowly curl up. So you are using your hip flexors here, but mainly we're trying to focus on the core. So it's a controlled movement, not using momentum. If you need to adapt it, you can bend the knees in. And extend them away. And if you can't get up at all from the floor, you can have one leg extended instead. Have one more. And just release the hips. And then we're going to finish with leg pull front. So start in an all fours position. Pull the rib cage in tight, squeeze the core, extend one leg back at a time so that you don't stick your bottom in the air. 
So squeeze the core and extend through the leg that's ex uh, lifting in the air. And you're pressing through the heel of the leg that's on the floor. Flex the foot to get the back of the leg working harder. Keep your chest extending forward as the leg pulls back so you've got two points of elongation. The crown of the head is lengthening, the shoulders are pulling down away from the ears. If you start to feel the back sagging here, you could stick your bottom in the air. And back into baby pose to release off. And let's just release the spine. Turn the fingers in towards each other. And keep pressing the hips back evenly. And it's just a rotation through the upper back, but don't force the movement. Try to relax the head, because often people try to almost crane the neck back, but what we're trying to do is just relax the neck and shoulders into the position. The chest is coming to the floor, the hips aren't pushing back here. And just release the chest as well. Same again, we're lowering the chest to the floor rather than pushing the hips back to affect the downward movement. You'll feel this stretching the pectoral major. And we're going to finish with a roll up. So you can use this to compare with the roll up at the beginning of the class, just so that you can compare your flexibility. And then one roll down, just to compare with the first roll down we did. You can do this with the arms by your side if there's too much strain on the shoulder there. And just give a mark out of 10 just to compare with your first roll downs. The head comes up last. And finish there.